Two weeks or so before the race, you have to really uh, ramp up the intensity a little bit, especially with like, a crit start. It's uh, one hour all out, you can't just get into it and just riding easy uh, every day. You have to, you have to train that, that sort of intensity already. It's, it's never the same like in a race, for example, in lead up to you need the races, that's why we start straight away from the season to really always focus on the sprints and doing the lead outs. I definitely was more nervous than uh, yeah, before yeah, race. same. Uh, I wasn't shaking, but uh, at many races you just crying go in a bit. crying a little bit. But uh, <laughs> it was pretty uh, nervous more than other races. Some races you just have some time to roll into it, but you don't really know where you're at. You know, I've been training hard, but how good you really are, you'll only find out racing. The positioning is really, really important, and once you have reach that, that goal just before the final sprint, you cannot do really what went wrong anymore because uh, once the team got you in that position, um, you will stay there because it's so fast. But to really come there is uh, a lot of hard work, so that makes the team so important for me as a sprinter. So it's more important that I keep them in the front till about 500 meters to go and if I can make it till 200 it's better. So I just tried to go all out till 500 meters to go and then realized I was going to have to do 300 more meters. <laughs> <laughs> so that was really painful. Uh, a couple of days ago we almost had a crash in training when Tom de Moulin just went uh, all out in the brakes and he saw a kangaroo on the side of the road. I think we're doing 70k an hour and all of a sudden he just breaks out of nowhere just to stop to see a kangaroo. He's, he's, a, he's a nice guy to hang out with and we travel together sometimes and obviously in the bus to the start and stuff and uh, we always try to make it, uh, make it fun, uh, play some music and we're not one of those teams where everybody sits with the headphones on, we actually, uh, we actually talk and, and it's always, uh, always a good time. Yeah. Some teams we don't talk with each other. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's big news. <laughs> Never. Never? Never. 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 Physics, is it? <laughs> no, he's got some good skills. Well, being most sprinters have got really good skills, and he obviously uh, has to try to catch up to me in the descents because I climb faster. I am. <laughs> True. They have done really well for you know, brand new helmets. It's all all brand new design and everything, and and it, they're actually very comfortable. Um, and Marcel was wearing the the aerodynamic helmet yesterday. It's pretty cool still for an aerodynamic helmet. Well, very often that's a problem because it's completely closed and um, you get a pretty hot head under that. I will try to wear it on stages where I think that there will be a sprint at the end or um, where it can make a difference. Yeah, I use the Propel. Because for me as a sprinter it's a very aerodynamic bike. When we think about the grid yesterday for example, we sprinted around 72 km per hour and it's all about aerodynamics. And it's very stiff, so with my weight and my power, I really need a stiff bike on my ass. And uh, that's, uh, that's, that's what I have with the program.